Good morning. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has, through the strength of his own Holy Spirit, invited us to be into worship this morning. Thank you to our handbell players for uh, ringers as they've come this morning to help welcome us into worship. Um, And as we worship this day, may we do so in the strength of Christ, with the love of Christ. Uh, just thankful that you're here, and as, uh, as we continue to, to slog on through this time of COVID-19, it's good to see some of you back, and I've also talked to others who've now gotten their vaccines and will be getting back to church, so thank you for being here, and thank you for giving us the ability to be in worship safely. And we continue our time of worship this morning with um, our, I believe our announcements are up next. Your baby bottle boomerangs for Heartbeats Women's Center are due today. Thank you for your support. There will be an informational meeting this afternoon at 4.30 p.m. in the chapel for anyone interested in going on our mission trip to Belize, happening July 17th through 25th, 2021. If you are looking for an opportunity to serve, join us tomorrow, Monday, March 1st at 10.30 a.m. in the FLC for our monthly Helping Hands meeting. It's that time again. Our monthly Chicken Pickin' is happening this Tuesday, March 2nd at 10 a.m. in the FLC. Following that, this Thursday, March 4th, is our first Thursday lunch from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We will sell 9 by 9 inch chicken pies and baked spaghetti and single servings of banana pudding. This event is drive through only. Place your order early by contacting the church office. Losing a loved one is a difficult thing to endure. Learn strategies of how to handle grief by joining our Grief Share program, a special weekly seminar and support group to help rebuild your life after losing a loved one. Virtual meetings will happen every Tuesday evening starting March 2nd and going through June 1st from 6.30 to 8 p.m. through Zoom. Please register at the griefshare.org link below. If you have any questions, please contact Janet Chubb. And as we enter into this second Sunday of Lent, please hear this opening prayer as we prepare our hearts even further for worship. O merciful Father, in compassion for your sinful children, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Savior of the world. Grant us grace to fill and to lament our share of the evil that had made it necessary 
for him to suffer and die for our salvation. Help us by self-denial, prayer, and meditation to prepare our hearts for deeper penitence and a better life. And give us a true longing to be free from sin through the deliverance won by Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And as we are still in the, the midst of our COVID precautions, we are still not back to the time where we will be doing congregational singing. And I welcome Dennis Lee to come and lead us in this morning's uh, hymn. Please use this as a time of reflection and meditation. And if you uh, want to sing along quietly where you are, you're welcome to do that as well. Dennis, and as we uh, take a few moments to reflect on how God has given to us, we also give back to God. Uh, we do not take an offering like we used to, as you all well know. There are offering uh, boxes in the back if you brought an offering with you this morning. There are also a variety of ways to give online. For those of you who are watching from home, we are so glad you are a part of this. Uh, and you can find those ways to give online. I, I just want to tell you one brief story about what happens because you give to this church. As many of you know, I, this is my first Sunday back in two Sundays. I was diagnosed with COVID-19 and went into uh, isolation, lockdown, all that good stuff. My wife brought me food on a tray, left it beside the door, and ran away. So... <laughs> Um, I realized I need to behave myself because I would not do well with incarceration for a lot of reasons. But being stuck in the bedroom for 10, 12 days, was, uh, I, it, it got old really quick. I couldn't imagine having to deal with that and not having a home, however. As frustrated as I got with those walls of, uh, of my bedroom... I also have to acknowledge I had a place to be. I had a bathroom connected to the bedroom. I had everything I needed. Could you imagine being diagnosed with COVID-19 and having nowhere to go? That was the case that someone in our community found themselves up against recently. Uh, but thankfully, because of the generosity of the Church of Jesus Christ and your generosity back to this church, we were able to provide this person in need with a hotel room to get better, a place to be in isolation, a place to uh, recover. Uh, and sometimes we forget uh, just how much the homeless population struggles. 
And thank you for your generosity because of the way you give to this church. We were able to provide for this person. Just just know that um, putting money in the offering plate is about worshiping God first and foremost. And when we do that, things happen and people are helped. So thank you for your generosity in giving back to God in that way. And thank you for our missions folks who are so adept and well-equipped to help people in need. Um, This time I want to invite Mr. David Washko to come forward. David is our Director of Discipleship here at Denver United Methodist Church, and he will be leading us in a time of prayer this morning. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the day that you have put before us. We thank you, Father, that your love is evidenced all around us. Lord, help us to feel your presence. Even in an ever-changing world, our earth is changing, Father. We ask that you help rid us of our fears by us leaning on you, by us coming to you, Father, by us looking for you and where you are working. Lord, I ask that our eyes are open, our ears are open, that we can see where you are working and join you. Help us to drop our daily tasks, our daily lists, when there's opportunities where you are calling upon us to help serve you, to help further your kingdom. Lord, you said that you did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear, but rather a spirit of power, love, and discipline. So, Lord, help us to take those characteristics into reading and saying your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the kingdom forever. Amen. God is our strength and refuge, our help forever near. While resting in his shelter, no evil will we fear. Not if the mountains crumble into the angry Nor if the surging ocean exceeds its boundary. The quiet stream refreshes the city of our God. His throne stands on a back that while kingdoms rise and fall. One word from Jacob's Savior will melt the raging throng. The Lord of hosts is with us. He is our fortress strong. Behold God's glorious power. He makes all warfare cease. Each weapon he will shatter, the world will be at peace. Be still, Christ, heaven sovereign. Be still, for I am God. I 
all kingdoms, all creation will bow beneath my rod. The violent seas turn placid when Jesus cried, be still. Fears gone, twelve men stood gasping when waves obeyed his will. And soon the same voice speaking will clear bluffs herbid storm. The Lord of hosts is with us for now and Let's start by saying thank you to, uh, especially to the entire staff uh, for uh, t just taking care of things while I was away. Things seemed to run better when I wasn't here than when I am here. A uh, little worried about that, but that's okay. But a, a big thank you to David and to Ben, our student pastor, for stepping in and um, taking care of last week's message and for the good work you did with that. As you can tell from the bumper video, we are in this series for Lent called Turn, the idea of, of turn being turn away or turn away to. Um, and uh, so as we go through each week, we're going to be playing off that word just a little bit. Today's scripture comes to us from the book of Psalms, from Psalm 46, and it reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its torment. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on all the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations, I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you would help us this day, that you would guide us in our meditation upon your word and in the proclamation of it. May the strength of your Holy Spirit guide this time and accomplish that which you intend. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, I want to start on a, a little time travel exercise. For some of you, this will seem like the dark ages. Uh, for others of you, it will seem like yesterday. 
Does anyone remember as a kid, and I, this is my memory as a kid, waking up early on a Saturday morning to watch cartoons? Because it was the only day of the week they came on. And my brothers and I, we would get up and we would get to the TV and we would turn on the TV. And you know what we would find? That there was nothing on yet. Do you remember the days when they didn't broadcast 24 hours a day? And so we would cut on the TV and there would be uh, some kind of placeholder picture there. And we would wait for the broadcast day to start. Can you imagine that? Some of you are sitting there going, what? All, all I've got to do to find anything I want is pull it up on an iPad or an iPhone or an i whatever, and I can watch anything I want, anytime I want. But that's not how it used to work. And we would sit there and wait and wait, and what seemed like forever until the broadcast day would start for the one TV station that we got. That does seem like the dark ages in so many ways, doesn't it? That's uh, kind of the, the way back machine because who can imagine with 24-hour broadcast of everything in the world what it was like to only have one TV station and that TV station not even to be on air 24 hours a day. Maybe you remember when the news came on, not when the news stayed on. Um, my dad would watch Walter Cronkite every night because, well, that was the one TV station we got. And I used to think, oh, this is so boring. He's going to watch this for 30 whole minutes. Somehow Walter managed to get across what was going on in the entire world in 30 minutes. I bring all that up because have you stopped to consider just how much information we receive in a given day. Uh, we have a new terms and, term and language now. We call it screen time, right? Screen time. That's not something we were used to not too long ago, but screen time refers to how much time are you in front of a screen, whether that's a computer screen, a TV screen, or a telephone screen. Screen time during this time of pandemic has gone through the roof. Um, many people reporting that they spend seven to eight hours, as much as 12 hours a day, in front of a screen of some type. Just, just think about that. That's almost the entire amount that we are awake. We're staring at something. And we're not just staring at something that's not uh, having something to do with us back. There's an interaction that's going on there. Inputs are coming into our brains, our hearts, our souls. We're being pushed this way and that way uh, by advertisers. And advertisers are really good. And maybe you've noticed that. They get to us in all kinds of ways. Um, and, and it's just like we've... I remember the first time that I had done a search for something and then, then a pop-up showed up on another screen. You ever had that happen? It's because they're listening and they're paying attention. Uh, and it's disconcerting to think about the number of ads we experience on any given day. The question is, what is this doing to us? What is it doing to our souls? What is it doing to our spirits? What is, what's it doing to us emotionally and mentally? Um, we report higher rates of anxiety and depression and struggles with our mental well-being. It doesn't seem to be helping us all that much. And I'm not one who's up here, and uh, I've been waiting a long time to say this word. I'm not a Luddite. Aren't you glad I used that? Those are those people back in, uh, in England who wanted to resist the Industrial Revolution and thought all technology was bad. But I think we need to just pay attention to the inputs that are coming into our lives and into our beings. And the season of Lent gives us a good opportunity to, to ask ourselves some very important questions. And today I, I want us to ask this question of what is speaking into our hearts? What is speaking into our souls? Are we taking time to be still and know of God's presence? 
I love Psalm 46. I love that, that last line, be still and know that I am God. Well, one thing about screen time is it makes us still, it makes us sit on our backsides. But that's not the kind of still this is talking about. The kind of stillness the psalmist is talking about is an intentional, meditative, paying attention to God and the things of God. I think it's awfully hard to do when we invite all these distractions into our lives. One of the things I did while I was uh, locked away was I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't stop all screen time, but, but I did manage to not uh, use a screen until sometime, uh, at least till 5, 6 o'clock in the evening. Um, believe it or not, I actually read my Bible. Uh, I know, it's, it's, it's shocking. Uh, I'm surprised it didn't make world news. Methodist minister reads the Bible. I read through the book of Exodus uh, as part of my time uh, locked away. And there's a theme that comes up in Exodus over and over and over again, among many others. But there's one that comes up, and that is the command that God constantly, consistently gives throughout that book to keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath. And then, you know, you read a little bit more, and then you're back at it. Keep the Sabbath. Read a little more. Then keep the Sabbath. Oh, by the way, keep the Sabbath. Why do you think that point is hammered home so much? Keep the Sabbath. Keep that time of rest. Don't do anything. Rest. Recharge. Reconnect. I imagine what it was like in those days of Moses. And you think about this, this ragtag group of people who've just escaped slavery. It's a roving, moving refugee camp. Can you imagine the hustle and bustle of that? People uh, setting up households, people moving tents, people herding animals. Can you imagine the chaos of that? That's what you get six days a week, complete and utter noise and chaos. But then on that seventh day, everything stops. Everything stops because they are keeping the Sabbath. Because they're taking time to intentionally pay attention to God and what God is all about. I imagine it felt pretty remarkable. I imagine it felt pretty holy. But we have trouble paying attention to God. That's part of our struggle is that we have trouble paying attention to God. We easily fall for the wrong thing. We easily fall in love with things that are not God. So here's what I want to do today. This, is, this should be interesting. If nothing else, it may be uh, highly entertaining. I'm going to try to, to sketch out for us why we have trouble paying attention to God. Now, this isn't my thinking. It's some, from someone who's much smarter than me, uh, from Augustine. And if he became he St. Became Augustine, so I guess he's also much more holy than me. But this is his basic understanding of where we went wrong and how we use the, our love. All right, so Augustine would say in the beginning was God. You didn't know that's what God looked like, but God looks like a big cloud. And yes, that is a, that's God. That, my, my handwriting is not great, but I'm trying. All right, so God, you remember in the beginning was God, right? And what did God do? Well, God creates the heavens. And yes, that is a, um, that is the sun. That's not an uh, a tangelo that's gone bad. So, creates the heavens and the earth. And on the heavens and the earth, God creates plants, trees, all that kind of stuff, right? That's a tree. I have to provide that. He, 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 he created animals. I don't know what kind of animal this is, but I'm going to give it a horn and a tail. It's open to interpretation. All right, so God creates all these things, right? 
And God looks at them and says, what? It's good. It is good. And in the midst of this creation, God creates human beings. And if you were expecting anything other than a stick figure at this point, your expectations are way too high. All right, so a couple of them, right? So God creates human beings. All of creation is a reflection of God's goodness, God's glory, God's grace, God's love. The intent of creation and the intent of humanity in the midst of creation, and by the way, humanity is that which is created in God's own image. It is the only thing that's mentioned that way. And do you remember the qualifier that God uses when he creates human beings? After human beings are created, he doesn't just say it is good. He says it is very good. An exalted place in creation. You can also go and read Psalm 8 if you want to know of the exalted place God gives humanity. But the point of this was for us... You like my heart? Okay, to love God. Right? That's the point. We were created to reflect God's image and to love God. All makes sense, I hope. But here's what happens. It doesn't take us long, and if you read the creation story, to where we start falling in love with the wrong thing. That's not a very good arrow, but hope you get the point. We fall in love with the the trees, and we fall in love with the animals, we fall in love with each other, and all these things sound like they can be just fine, right? But we neglect our love of God. It, it's what Augustine calls love wrongly ordered. We love the wrong things. And that is as at the root of our sinfulness, being in love with the wrong things given our love to that which doesn't deserve our love or our uh, passion or energy. We so easily do that. That is at the heart of the fall. Okay, aren't you glad I got rid of that so that you don't have to look at it anymore? And when we think about sin, this is going to be even worse. I'm going to try it. Like a target... The goal of sin is supposed to be a bow. It's supposed to be an arrow. The goal of our lives is to hit the target, right? To stay on the target. Um, when we miss the target, when we miss the mark, that's, when we, that's another, in, uh, another understanding of sin, missing the mark. So what do we have to do to love the right things? Because when we love the wrong things, our souls are distressed, our minds are distressed. Our beings are distressed. It is stressful to be in a state of sin. And we can see that in our culture. How much stress do we have? How much anxiety and worry and discontentment do we have? It's off the charts. And from a Christian perspective, I argue that that's off the charts because we are deeply in love with the wrong things. Deeply in love with the wrong things. We have so many things that are vying for our love and our attention. One of the interesting things that scientists are seeing with our consumption of social media and news is the brain studies that show that when someone is on social media and they get a response on social media, parts of their brain that light up are the same that light up with addiction. The same goes for the news. It's addictive. It is affecting our brain structures. It's not that there's 24 hours of news. It's just that we've got 24 hours. We, we retell the same news 24 hours in a row. I'm not saying stop watching the news. I'm just asking, are you watching too much? I'm not saying you have to abandon all social media. I'm just asking, are you using it appropriately? It's a tool, just like anything else. But we've gone so far overboard that we allow those influences to change our lives, to change our hearts. 
Do we really take seriously Christ's call to follow Him and allow Him to be our Lord? To cast away everything else? I, I hope we can, but I think it's got to start with us seeing that everything else is killing us. It really is, and we need to be rescued from it. We desperately need to be saved from our sin, from our love wrongly ordered. It is killing us. And so what do we do? Well, today's lesson, the lesson or our sermon title is simply called Turn off. Turn off. And the question is, for all of us, what do we need to turn off? Do we start, if you start your day, maybe, maybe you're in that habit of first thing you do is you pick up this. How many of us are there? Because how, this has become all pervasive, right? It stays beside most people's beds. And first thing you do, use it for an alarm clock. First thing many people do is op stop, is open this up, check the news feeds because they're right there. What would it look like to not do that? What would it look like to turn off those negative inputs for the first hour of your day? Oh, what? I know I'm asking a lot. <laughs> An hour. And what would it look like if you turned them off an hour before you went to bed? I believe that your life would be quantitatively different if you started your day with God and ended your day with God. I think God has more to offer us than Facebook or Instagram or whatever is your social media platform of choice. I think God has more to offer us than Fox or CNN or MSNBC or whatever your news channel of choice is. I believe God has a life that he's yearning for us to accept and lean into. All this stuff, all this news, all this entertainment what does it do? It, it's like wind that blows on us constantly, pushing us around, keeping us unstable. God invites us to center ourselves, to be still and know that I am God. To pay attention to what God is doing. And so here's a challenge for the remainder of Lent. Turn something off. Turn off that news feed. Turn off that whatever leave it off in the morning at least for an hour and turn it off an hour before you go to bed just try it just see what God will do and give that time back to God as we are entering into spring and this is why we love to live in North Carolina um Ben and his family in case you didn't know uh, moved here from Buffalo New York they're going to enjoy spring for the first time in a long time. Pay attention to what God is doing right in front of your eyes. Pay attention to how God's going to bring life back out of the darkness. The leaves are going to start coming out. The blooms are going to start forming. Don't miss that. It's a sign for us of resurrection in life. And so the challenge... Pay attention. Be still. Know that God is there. Yes, it's going to require some work. Maybe you've got an addiction to break to social media or to news. But know this. God's Spirit is inviting you into that. God's Spirit's already there. And God's yearning for you to take this step because God desires nothing more than to be in a fuller, deeper, more loving relationship with that which he has created, which is you, and you are beloved. And that's worth knowing, and that's worth being still for.
And that's worth turning off other things to be able to receive. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence and be still. Thank you for the chance to hear your word and to hear the historic teaching of the church which compels us to pay attention to that which we love. No, God, if we want to love rightly, we have to love the right things. So forgive us when we've loved things that we shouldn't. We have loved things that are destructive to us. We have indulged ourselves in that which would bring us to harm. So we ask for your forgiveness. We ask that you would create in us a new mind and a new heart to be open to your love and to receive that love. In Christ's name, amen. I'd like to invite Dennis to come forward as he leads our last hymn. you to please stand. And for those of you who are our guests today, we are a warm and hospitable congregation 
except during times of COVID-19. So we're not going to be shaking your hands or hugging your neck or anything like that, but just know we are glad you are here. Welcome. We're glad you're a part of this service, whether you're here in person or whether you have joined us online. But as you go, go into a world that's going to ask for your attention and demand your attention. May God give you the strength to turn that off and to make space in your life to be still and to know God. And we will find that that is all the blessing we need and then some. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.